Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another resin project. So today I have my absolute new favorite resin project of all time, little resin mushrooms, and they are trinket boxes so you can put things in them. Hide things, put things, whatever you wanna do. I love these. I have done a couple trinket boxes I don't quite know why they're called trinket boxes other than small mushroom you can put things inside of is way too long for a Google search, but I love, especially how this one turned out. I then tried to make a pink one, and while I like this one, um, the pink paint doesn't mix quite the same way this copper does. I might have to get more colors of this, so. I'm going to go ahead, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to show you the entire project. It is a silicone based mold and it's a deeper pour. Um, it's also a little trickier to unmold. So this is a very easy project. Even if you're a beginner with a little patience, you can do it, but it is not like level one. It's like level two. So, you know, scale of one to 10, we're still at the bottom, but so worth it. I might have to make an army of these. I'm going to go put them with my little fall gnomes. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about them and I'm going to start showing you how to make them. Let's get started. All right, y'all. So let's jump right in to mixing our resin. So we are going to start by putting on all of our protective gear because that is always the most important. So, dun dun dun. -dun. Go ahead and put on my gloves, put on my respirator, and now I'm going to make several projects at once, even though I'm going to be showing you these projects one at a time. And so in order to make the four or five different fall projects I'm working on, I'm going to go ahead and mix 900 milliliters of resin, and then I'll split it between those projects. I will put on the screen here how many milliliters we use for each individual project on that video. Um, and I am of course using my Total Boat Maker Poxy. This is a one-to-one -one ratio resin. If you want a full in-depth mixing tutorial for resin, I did just release my resin for beginners course. I will link that down below. I go over every single step in detail for all kinds of things, but mixing resin is lesson number one, because if you're going to make anything with resin, kind of an important step. But for today, I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to mix 900 milliliters of resin here, and then we will get started with our individual fall projects. I'm so excited. We have so many fun things to make today. So as always, just dun 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 dun. One pump. So one pump. I'll be back once this is all mixed up and ready to roll. All right, so we've got all our resin mixed. We've got about, well, it doesn't really matter because we're using different amounts for each project but we've got about half copper and half of the copper flakes. So we are going to go ahead. I've let them sit for a minute. I'm going to use my heat gun to pop all those bubbles. At least any bubbles that have come to the surface, of course, we are using a silicone mold today, so we want to use a heat gun instead of a torch. That way we do not melt our silicone mold. But I'm going to go ahead and move everything out of the way so that we can bring our uh, silicone mold in and get started. All right, so our very first project is this adorable mushroom container. I cannot wait for this guy. I'm not exactly sure. I think he goes this way. 
that would make the most sense because you put things inside. But you can see he's got a little base, so he stands up and we're going to fill him with our resin today. So I want to try an experiment and a little bit of a mix of our copper and our rose gold flakes. So instead of just pouring a solid um, piece, we're going to pour a little one and a little of the other and see how they mix together. I think that'll give us a really interesting, um, unique shape. So I'm going to start by just pouring this in a thin stream and I'm kind of tipping it so that it goes down. Now, since this, this mold is a uh, deep, can't get all the bubbles. This thin stream here is the best way to eliminate as many bubbles from that bottom as possible. So now we're going to go on the other side and I'm going to pour a little bit of the flakes. And we're just going to keep layering this in here until he's all the way full. Ooh. All right, so this is going to need to settle down a little. There we go. And they'll mix together. That's, that's okay. That's kind of what we want. We'll just see how it looks at the end with pouring it all at once. Typically, if you want really distinctive sections, you're going to need to pour, let it cure, pour, let it cure. Let me grab a paper towel so I can wipe the lips of these off. I don't want to get my table too messy. All right, let's go ahead and pour some more. Let that settle out. I'm going to go ahead and remove my spatulas here. Ooh, I'm making a mess. Okay. Yeah, gloves are replaceable. This is why we wear safety gear. This is why we use paper towels and silicone pieces. Even being careful. All right, give me a minute. I'm gonna go get new gloves because I don't wanna get all my containers coated in, in resin this early on. I'll be right back. All right, clean hands. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one sit for a minute. I do think that what's happening at this point, since I'm pouring at the same time, is that the copper and the clear with the rose gold flakes are just merging and are kind of making one layer. I don't think there's a lot of separation in between them right now, which is okay. Just depends on if that's what you want. The number one lesson for resin is always that it does what it wants. You can only control it so much. <laughs> Pouring these guys in layers so that I can pop as many of the bubbles as possible. Just want to move that big bloob around. Bloob, gloob, glob. Not sure what descriptive word to use for that. That big piece of flake. Rose gold flake.
in my resin course, I talk a lot about layering and how layering at the same time like this gives you really soft diffused edges as opposed to waiting between your layers. So you want to check out all of those descriptions, you can go check it out. It's a very in-depth course. It has 10 lessons. I'm very proud of it. I just finished it. Well, I didn't just finish it, but I finished it soon-ish ago to the point where I'm still very excited about it. But don't worry, I will still be sharing lots of free tutorials on YouTube, on my blog. But if you want a one stop, I will show you everything you need to know to get started with your resin projects. Like right now, I've put together all of my best lessons over there. Because y'all, I did this the YouTube way. I learned by messing up a lot of resin. <sighs> It's fun, but it's, it's not super cost effective. If I could have just learned everything in one place. That would have been nice. little molds always surprise me by how much resin they take. I did plan a full 400 milliliters for this little guy, but we'll see. We'll see how many he ends up taking. Pop those bubbles before I keep going. See all these bubbles in here? I love these rose gold flakes because you can see they, they don't settle quite the same as um, glitter does. Glitter would all be at the very bottom of this mold right now. It does not say suspended. Whereas these flakes, they really like stay suspended where you put them. All right, that is starting to overflow. So I'm going to leave it. We might need to take a smidge out of the top for that one, but we'll leave it a second and see. Man, still more bubbles. That's why we pour in layers. I should, I should record my layer song there. I'm going to pour a big chunk of this copper so that I have a nice big solid spot on the top of the mushroom and then I'll finish it off with the rose gold flakes here. I hope you can see on video, but those little, little air bubbles just keep coming to the surface. As long as they're coming up, you want to pop them. All right, I'm gonna finish this off here. Some flakes. Probably good. I'm going to take a little bit of this paper towel and I'm just going to try to gently remove a little bit of this one because I think it's just too much. So all I'm going to do is go right in the middle. I don't want to overflow it. I'm just going to let it kind of soak up. 
and then move. That's good, but we need a little bit more. There we go. That looks much better. All right, so I am going to go ahead. I have this, of course, on my silicone. Well, let me put this away. Silicone mat, then a baking tray. That makes it really sturdy so I can lift it level and take it inside where I'll cover it with a cardboard box to cure overnight. And then tomorrow we will unmold this once it is cured. And I think he's going to be so cute. I have a feeling I'm going to need at least four or five of these little mushroom guys all over. I have some big mushrooms and I think these are going to be so cute to tuck underneath them. Plus my gnomes. I made fall gnomes last year. Oh my God. They're going to be so cute. All right, y'all. I will see you tomorrow. All right, y'all, ready to get this little mushroom out of here. So these molds for these trinket boxes tend to be a little hard to demold, mainly because you've got a big solid piece. You've got to get the silicone all the way up and off. This one won't be too bad. I have one that's a crown and oh man, it's hard. So that is part of my resin course. If you want to see how to demold really hard things. Go over it. For this one, we should just be able to kind of roll it up and off. That's nice. Whenever rolling is an option. I'm going to introduce air. We've got these little designs on the top. Oh man, this is cute. Oh man, that's cute. I'm glad we added um, all that copper. But it's kind of interesting. So it seems like most of the copper settled at the bottom, probably because it's heavier. And then the flakes kind of settled around the outside. All right, let's demold the bottom. After we flip this guy back inside out. And uh, see how it settled here. Oh, similar. Okay, interesting. So heavy copper paint is gonna go to the front. I wonder how that would change if we did glitter instead of rose gold flakes, since like I said, those rose gold flakes are really good about staying suspended and not just sinking to the front. This is so much easier when you have your nails like not grown out like crazy. You have normal people nails. Need to cut them all off, get them redone. All right, rolling, rolling. You can get it started, you can keep it going. Oh, rolling is so much easier. The points of the crown one, oh, that's cute. Make that hard. And now I'm just going to kind of Pull and twist. There we go. Oh, that's cute. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting for this. Oh, he's, he's so cute. Oh, I love the two tone. I wasn't sure, but I didn't want to just do one solid color and I didn't want to just do all flakes because I wanted a little bit more depth. Oh, he's so cute for fall. Okay. So obviously I have to make a whole army of these, at least an army. I need a forest of them. I'm going to go put this inside with some of my gnomes and I will show you. Oh, silicone. My friend and my enemy. Why must you do these things? All right. Now, make sure that you are storing your molds for these pieces. 
on a flat surface like this where they're not being pushed up against. If I just kind of throw these in a box and this is on its side like this and it's pushed in and this one say was like flattened, they will get stuck in those positions, especially if you live in a hot area. So you want to store your molds how they need to be on a flat surface. That way they stay that shape, okay? Room temperature stored flat. All right, ready for a close up. I love, woo, I love this. I want to just put it on my shelf and like stare at it. It is so cute, so stinking cute. I did, you can see I did make a second one. I wanted a little pink one to go with it. I'm not as in love with this color pink as I am with this copper. Like, do you see the difference in how the copper metallic shift that this paint has. The paint is definitely heavier, whereas the flakes are coming to the bottom. Paint is dropping to the bottom, flakes are staying at the top. So I like that. It's an interesting enough design concept, but I think I might go buy a Tester's brand pink and try to replicate this metallic look with the pink. Either way, I love them. I love them. I also, you can see that they fit like little lids, but this one only has a slight lip because I didn't fill that mold full to the top. This one I did, and it is a much more pronounced, refined, defined um, lip that fits right inside the base, which is wonderful. So tip, fill that mold all the way to the top. How cute is that? How cute is that? All right, I will grab some shots for y'all with these more styled, but I just wanted to give you a close up look at the pattern on top and how the different everything plays together. So I will see y'all in the next project. Bye.